beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. Now listen. A good teacher does not give two examples and set exams. No. When they give you, especially a difficult aspect of mathematics, they give you as many examples. And those examples have variations of the way the underlying principles are applied. Is that true? Uh -huh. It's supposed to help you familiarize you with the different ways. This is what the Bible is doing. We're working math here. Are we together? So the Bible begins to give you different people. Do you know everything the Bible is saying about them is the same? He's only using different human examples to show you different applications. How men maneuvered circumstances by faith. So by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, not seen as yet, moved with fear. The word fear there is reverence. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. 100 years it took Noah to build an ark. How many years have you waited for your miracle? Let me hear it please. Six months. And you're already saying, Lord, if by November, a man moved by faith for 100 years, how long do you have to live on earth to spend 100 years building an ark? I'm sure the children, when they gave birth to their children, they said, we, we grew up seeing our grandfather. What exactly is this project? And Noah said, the rain will come. And the children said, well, I'm now a teenager. I, I believe the rain will come. And God kept watching and says, it was by faith. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to break down faith for you to really understand. And then you will know that many people really do not believe in God. Many of you at the end of this teaching, you will tell God, I'm sorry. Because you will find out that you really should not receive a result. Amen. Next verse. By faith. Now Abraham comes in. I like the Bible. How many people now? Abel, help me. Enoch, uh huh. Noah, Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place, that means your destiny must be fulfilled by faith. God called a man. Are you seeing now? So we see by faith to do different things. Translation. Now we're seeing he's talking about destiny here and inheritance. By faith, you are not the first person to graduate and wonder what to do with your life. There was a man in the awe of the Chaldeans, awe of the Chaldeans called Abraham. And the Bible says, when he was called to go out to a place which he should, after receive an inheritance, obeyed. He says, and he went out. Help me please. That's the faith part of it. Not knowing whither he went. Go 
to Lagos. Yes, Lord. What are you doing in Lagos? Obeying God. You are stupid. God, what do you say? You are a man of faith. Abraham. Don't turn there. Genesis 22. Genesis 12. Come out of your father's house. And out of your kindred. And out of all of these. Listen. To a land that I will show you. No name. The assignment is follow me. And the Bible says Abraham gathered his house and says, Gentlemen, we're off. Let's go. May you surround people in your life who can let you obey God. Yeah. There are times, let me just say this in advance. There are times certain people will love you too much to allow you obey God. Especially for we young people. Because our parents, many of them, even those who were not born again, walked by faith. Are we together? The last time their father saw them was from one. They used to call it from one. The next time the person came, he came with the lady he would marry, a master's holder. How he survived, the father did not know. One heavy box and a blessing. Don't drink, don't follow women, be hardworking. The God that kept me, keep you. Enter a boat and go. And the father had confidence that the boy would not die. After eight years, he now came back and said, Daddy, God is faithful. I now have a house, a car. How did it happen? By faith. But now, you see someone of 30, they say, I think you should start settling. I say, Mommy, I will take it gently. Just buy me blanket, buy me sugar, buy me tea. Don't laugh. We have been so pampered. That the system of faith is eroding our minds. So whenever we say faith, many people just laugh. That's the reason why there are very few people who really do much. I'm not even talking ministry in the kingdom, in our lives. This over pampering. Are we together now? Auxiliary faith. Okay, uncle, I'll take the first step, but make sure you are standing by. Look at what he told Peter. He said, fear not, Jesus speaking, it is I. And Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. Jesus said, come. Faith. Faith. Let's read to verse 10. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him, with him of the same promise. Uh -huh. For he looked for a city, Whose builder and maker is who? The Lord. Next verse. Through faith, the first woman now, also an elder. The first woman. Through faith, Sarah herself received what? So how do men receive strength in the kingdom? You don't receive strength in the kingdom just by eating a good meal. Although that is important. She received strength and conceived seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful. Now notice that among all these people. The common denominator is that they did or said something. Are we together? There was nobody whose testimony was just passive. The Bible tells us something they did, something they said, something they did, something they said. Let me say this up front. Faith is not hearing what God has said. Faith is fulfilling your own path. Your own path. Let's go to verse 17. I want to jump. Verse 17. Are we together? By faith, Abraham now, when he was tested, did what? Or tried. Offered up Isaac. 
and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said in Isaac shall thy seed be called sacrifice by faith sacrifice by faith now the Bible talks of Isaac Jacob Joseph let's go to 23 and look at Moses the Bible dwells for I don't know why but it seems to me like Moses was the person the Bible dwelt so much in. All of the people who the Bible talked about faith, even Abraham, who we call to be the father of faith, the Bible just spoke about him. But for Moses, the Bible seemed to dwell and talk a lot about Moses, which I found interesting. Let's read on. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was did what? Was he three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's command? You understand the act of faith? They put him in a basket and pushed him to the Nile, trusting God to take care of him. Next verse. Then, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called what? Refused to be called by faith. Just like you refuse to be called um, any name that seems derogatory, any name that comes from a background that can destroy you. Oh, you are all the poor ones. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said by faith, seeing something, he refused. Choosing rather, think about this, to suffer affliction. Listen, there are certain kinds of afflictions that the Bible says you must go through them by faith. It's a choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When a lady refuses to say yes to an unbeliever, and instead of marrying two years before that time, now remains single because she refused to say yes to an unbeliever by faith, waiting for a godly man she believes to be her husband. The Bible calls it to suffer affliction. Not every act of faith looks pleasant in the process. In fact, let me tell you something. A major part of the journey of faith will make you look stupid because you are forfeiting, we call it in economics, opportunity cost. You forgo something for the excellency of what is waiting for you. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what? A season. 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward and so on and so forth and um, let me look for somewhere now I mean the Bible talks about him right well let's read let's read really let's read down to um, 30 where it goes to Joshua now we're reading down to 30 you see how much a lot was talked about Moses by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. 28, we are reading down to 30. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Lest he that destroyed, the destroyer now, the firstborn should touch them. 29, this is the last of the talk about Moses. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. As by dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do. The Egyptians tried it, but they didn't do it by faith. So they died. Are you seeing now? Now let's talk of the wall of Jericho. Verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho did what? Not by strength. By faith. We saw them going around, walking around Jericho. Are you understanding the character of faith already? Every one of these people did something. Whoever tells you faith happens without your commitment lied to you. I'm showing you all through. The common denominator to all these things is that they believed God and there was a demand on their own part to respond by saying, by doing, by keeping their own part. So their obedience upgraded the promises of God to a covenant. 
the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Read 31. By faith, ah, yeah, yeah, the second woman. Look at the name the Bible calls her. Now, this is interesting. Why didn't he just say by faith, Rahab? I think we are smart enough to know. Then it says, by faith, Kalabakata, a woman who was a harlot changed her story. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not, meaning she was part of them. She was destined to perish. Please, is that true? What is the wages of sin? Help me. What is the wages of sin? That means there is a system in God where men can change prophecy. There is a system in God where men can alter obvious consequences. The key is faith. If this tells you her credentials, she was a harlot. Do you know what it means to earn a right to stay on a wall? So that whoever is passing sees you before even seeing the king. By faith, she changed her report. Everyone died in Jericho except Rahab not only did she not die she forced herself into the genealogy of Jesus when she had received the spies with peace and what more can I say I really wonder what more do you need to hear you, you see I'm understanding what Paul is saying Paul is saying, if by now you don't see the synergy, what more can I say? He says, for time would do what? To fail me, to talk of others. There were other elders in the Bible. Let's name them. Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. There were many. Next verse. Who did what? Through faith. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Uh -huh. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouths of lions. Next verse. Quench the violence of fire. Look at that. I wonder why Nigerian actors have never acted a film this powerful. Men who did this by faith. Produce a film and call it by faith exploits in the spirit they escaped the edge of the sword men who looked at death eyeball to eyeball and say you will not kill me and then the bible now says out of weakness were made what men who were born weak but refused that they will not die weak works valiant in fight turn to flight the armies of the aliens then listen to this women receive their dead raised back to life and then the Bible quickly puts a very strange balance it says and others were tortured not accepting that means they did not die out of the power of death conquering them the Bible says they rejected deliverance willingly they discovered in their knowledge of God that to die is gain and they said I can live but let me prove to God how much I trust him and they said it is within my power to command deliverance but I reject it faith it didn't say they died out of weakness please don't confuse this they died they had do you know there are many people today who died when we get to heaven they will tell you they were offered an opportunity to leave but they saw something higher and they said let's go the bible calls it faith now you mourn them and try to look for hilarious stories but they are they have joined those elders it's a list it's a roll call there are many people shortlisting themselves there. It says not accepting deliverance. That they may do what? Obtain a better resurrection. I'm going somewhere with all this. And you will soon see. Next verse. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. 
you are not the first to be laughed at are we together yeah moreover of bonds and imprisonment imprisonment they were stoned and they were sun asunder now you don't like this koinonia is quiet but the bible tells you beforehand that these men had the power they were not helpless bible history makes it look like they were helpless the bible says they they had the power to command deliverance but they saw something higher and by faith they stood they were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins being destitute afflicted and tormented of whom the world there are such men that the world was not worthy of they walked upon the earth have you been given something that you say is a privilege there are men who they are walking upon the earth is a blessing to the earth the bible says it's a privilege they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth 39 i want you to read 39 and the next verse i believe verse 40 am i am i right yes 39 and 40 read it with all your heart and your spirit ready one to read and this all uh -huh, having obtained a good report through faith receive not what now read on next verse god having provided some better thing for us that they without us there is a dimension of the manifestation of faith that god is trusting our generation to reveal and the bible calls it the perfection of all these elders as great as their exploits are and were the bible says that god had provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect now theologically speaking there's been two schools of thoughts just explaining this scripture a lot of people mean this to be the dispensation of grace because you would notice that all the people who were communicated were largely old testament people are we together now and so the better promises that many people think uh, they say that it is because these people suffered in the dispensation of the Lord, the Old Testament, and now we have access to grace, the substitutionary work of Christ. Now, that is true, but I don't believe that is all. Are we together? That is true, but the death of Christ in itself afforded us a higher platform to manifest faith. Are we together? Mm. An example of such opportunities is the possibility to live by the faith of the son of god now this was a possibility they did not experience but that a man can tap into a higher frequency of faith called the faith of the son of god not just your faith the faith of the son of god you can bring god's faith to an operation and get results this is a better promise but that's not what we are talking about i'm showing you men who did strange things through faith and so if you and i must make impact in our generation it will have to be how by faith through faith by faith through faith so how are you going to build that house how are you going to change the story of your family by faith how are you going to get out of that sickness and infirmity please understand what i'm saying there is the chronicles of ordinary men who dared to believe god and changed a lot of things so faith is, is, is important to please god and we have a testament of men and women who walked by faith the next thing i want us to look at Is the word of God let's look at the word of God being that this is the instrument that produces faith it is important for us to look at the character and I'll be very brief the character of the word of God write this down please the 
the word of God whether spoken or written the word of God whether spoken or written contains the life of God the word of God whether whether spoken or written contains the life of God the word of God whether written or spoken contains the life of God number two write it the word of God is a representation of his commitment to man the word of God is a representation I want you to write this we're looking at the character a representation of his commitment to man like you have a covenant like you have a contract between two people so the testament of his commitment to man number three the word of God represents his will for man now this is important we're going to dwell a little here the word of God represents his will comes from the Greek word logos where we get the word word logos the thoughts of a man the will of a man the intention of a man so the word of God represents his intention his will his will it's a legal term his will for man number four the word of God is the basis the basis for contact with man the word of God is the basis for contact with man I'm giving you certain characters of the word of God as far as the manifestation of faith is concerned the word of God is the basis for contact with man that means that the Holy Spirit remains helpless until the Word of God creates the platform for contact with man. Number five, the Word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. The Word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action God is moved to the feelings of our infirmities but not to action the word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action write this down the word of God contains instructions prophecies promises the word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. Also contains principles. Are we getting blessed? Now please look up everyone. Please look up. Now there's been a lot of argument in the body of Christ as to whether this should be called the word of God. The word Bible comes from the word Biblios and that just means a book, nothing special really. It just means a book. Are we together? Now theologically speaking for many years in the church age, they did not have a compendium of 66 books like this. There are other schools of thought that argue how that there are many chapters and verses that are missing in the Bible. There are many chapters and verses that were added that should not have been in the Bible. Are we together now? And how that there are other books of the Bible. Like there are arguments about the apocryphal books, the apocrypha. The Roman Catholics use that a lot. And then there are other books, the books of Jasha. There are other books called the Annals of the Kings. There is the book of Enoch. Are we together now? Now all these books together have been argued by theologians some of them believe that it should be contained since the character of scripture is that all scripture was inspired of god are we together and that anything that is of god should give spirit and life so i'm, I'm just giving you an educational background on this so that you will understand so there has been a lot of argument in fact currently um i know that there was a time certain 
uh, I think a rab rabbinical association also came up with certain things and they felt that a lot should be edited in scripture now the Old Testament was written in Hebrew say Hebrew and the, the New Testament was written largely in Greek and Aramaic are we together now these people wrote these scriptures but they were not in charge of its translation there's no point to give you the whole story of bible history how that this translation were in bits and pieces some of these pages were missing for many years and then they were found together with what we call the dead sea scrolls and then it was at the time of king james king james he was a real king ancient king called king james not ancient like modern history now king james who authorized the publication of a compendium of these 66 books that we call the bible are we together now so all the 66 books old and new testament together are called now i'm not the point of all of this is not to create a debate about other extra biblical texts or some exaggerations that were done here that's not the idea one thing we know for sure is this listen every man who contributed in the writing of this was imperfect as a person that means if God allowed them to still rob their imperfection it means the mystery is not in the letters are you getting what I'm saying now please you must understand what I'm teaching you we're examining faith Elijah was a temperous man the Bible is a compendium of many things demons spoke in this Bible is that true donkeys spoke in this Bible are we together men spoke in this bible people lied in this bible people use divination in this bible so the fact that it is written here does not automatically mean it is of god you have to get this so when the bible or when we talk about the word of god we are not talking about just the opening of anything because you see we must balance this there are believers who say if you can show me in the bible i will do it that means you are going to get into error the, the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want there are herbalists today when you enter their shrine you see other books and you see a very clean bible there are we together and they will read a scripture and instruct you based on that scripture and because it is in the bible you will believe i should walk no so i want us to examine what the word of god is listen to my message uh i think the living logos i done a teaching years ago on that what exactly is the word of god because none of the apostles in the early church in fact even up till um emperor emperor nero constantine and all of these people they never had the opportunity to hold the bible like this it was a taboo they were kept in temples are we together and then of course when the people of god were caught in different kinds of captivities they were hidden and taken from place to place to arrive like this as a compendium a lot happened to them are we together but the bible says let the word of christ colossians 3 verse 16 dwell in you richly so i want to ask you a question how did the disciples grow in the word when jesus resurrected i want you to go back to the book of acts when an average believer got up in the morning what did he study and how did he study are we together you would only go to the temple we do it in the anglican for those of us who are inclined anglican and maybe presbyterians to do this they have what we call first reading and second reading is that true where you come up you read this is the word of the lord thanks be to god and then you know that continues and then there are parts uh, where you recite you know the the apostles creed and so on and so forth like that now other pentecostal circles do not have the privilege of having that kind of thing you just come you preach and then you end this was how it was in jewish temples the priest one of the all of those people would come up and give you one of the scrolls they had messages for every time so you would read it and roll it back and and keep it and then they could preach from it they could speak for it and, and so on and so forth now if you don't understand this that i'm teaching three things will happen to you number one you can fall into the error 
of absorbing the letters blindly and believing that you are growing in the world because you are consuming these letters that's the first error or number two you can just say since this is not the word of God let me throw it away and destroy your spiritual life there are people today now you know I was talking with a few people and they were talking to me and said look the use of iPads and, and now please I don't have if you are using devices here that's the, the, the goal is not to to um, um, discredit you on all of that we're in the 21st century but I think a, a group of gentlemen were talking to me and they said apostle what is your take on the use of iPad as far as the revelation of the word of God we have is concerned because because our concept of scripture is that I'm holding a book a man of God even said in Revelations, God told John, write, not type. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, see, personally, I honestly, I honestly believe, see, there's something about holding this thing. There is a chemistry between the letters of this book and your eyes. I, I absolutely believe that. But I don't have a problem. I mean, I have all kinds of things. We use it on our devices, phones, laptops, and, and whatever you have. What is the word of God? Write this down. Let's define what the word of God is. Since this is the instrument for producing faith, write this down. The word of God is any communication. The word of God is any communication. Or any platform any communication or any platform where the voice of God the ways of God write it down where the voice of God the ways of God and the life of God can be accessed. The word of God is any communication. Or any platform. Where the voice of God. Please listen. The ways of God. And what? The life of God can be. That means what I am speaking to you now. If it contains the voice of God. If it contains, listen, the ways that is the principles of God. And if it is capable of releasing the life of God. What is this called? The word of God. Meaning as I'm speaking to you now. What I am saying is worthy of being written here. The only thing is that I was not part of those who were specifically, you know, brought together to make the 66 books. God's idea is not for us to be limited by 66 books. God's idea is that our lives become a continuation of the books that are written here. Are, are we together? So God's ultimate goal is not for you to be sound in scripture, but that you become it. An expression. That's why the Bible says we are living epistles. Say living epistles. So that, look at how it is. If you read something like, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The words that I speak, Listen, they are spirit and they are life. Are we together? God's idea is not just for me to read it, But become that scripture. So that whoever does not have an opportunity, And left his Bible at home, Can also read it in me. Are you getting the point? So imagine every believer like a page in the scripture, Releasing certain possibilities men were not supposed to know God just by reading the Bible they were supposed to know God by interacting with the church so that way before anybody opens this book he should open the book and say oh so this is an explanation so this attitude is called kindness are you getting what I'm saying Ah, uh, some of you are lost let's come again I want to deliver you from religion. Listen, listen, listen. 
The power is not just in cramming scriptures. The power is in the words that are written here. That the Holy Spirit can use this word to forge something upon your spirit. So that you become an expression of it. Not just a talker of it. And that's where we destroy ourselves. The word of God is not Greek. The word of God is not Hebrew. Listen, the word of God is not English. The word of God is any platform for accessing him. Listen, if there is a way I can make this become the voice of God and a platform to speak a particular scripture within the period of that miracle, this is the word of God. How do I teach this now? Help me, Holy Spirit. If I prophesy to you and I say, Hey, Jimmy, may the Lord bless you. And it happens. Do you know what? why it happened? Because what I have spoken is the word of God. It was a platform where the life of God could flow to him. If I use oil to lay on your head, the oil works because the word of God is on it. So the word of God is not the right things about God. The right things about God. How many of you know granite? Now this Bible is like the granite. The real granite. Do you just eat the thing like that? You open it. But you cannot access what is inside until you come to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, brothers and sisters, that is why many people read this, but they cannot get faith. I'm going to show you something, how faith comes. But we must understand the character and the word of God. I read a lot. I study the Bible. But I have the consciousness that I am an expression of the word of God. Are we together now? So when you come to me, I don't run and open the Bible and say, this verse is this verse, that. Uh -uh. That I left my Bible at home does not mean the word of God is at home. The word of God is living and active. It's your Bible. I'm, I'm teaching you your Bible. See, I'm showing you why we don't get results. I can hold this against a witch and put it under my bed and snore myself into a terrible dream. Are we together? I may think that because this was under my pillow, it does not have any power in itself. The power is released, listen, when this is studied by faith. By faith means that you believe that although these are letters, the Spirit of God can breathe upon this. This is what Logos, you see, the word Logos and Rema that people are speaking. Rema is not just the revealed word. Rema is when the breath of the Spirit comes upon this letter. It's like the breaking of the ground, not seed. And all of a sudden, you can receive it. So, you don't need to recite the scripture. You only need to have the life thereof. The recitation of the scripture is to add to your excellence in communication and to strengthen your conviction. It is not the recitation. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Jesus did not say, if you stand before people, the name he said is not Jesus. We mentioned Jesus so that they will know that the office we are acting upon is the Christ. The name is not Jesus. The name is Lord. And Lord is a revelation. It means absolute master, sovereign controller. So I look at a spirit. I'm not speaking, but I'm casting him in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is not a recitation. In the name of J-E-S-U-S. -S, be healed. No. The name of Jesus is an office. So whether I am talking or not. Is still the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Jesus meets somebody, a madman in Gadara. The demons beg him and beg him and say, don't cast out. What did he say? 
go now that word go you say it and it may not work because the go is not just g o the go was simply an a voice activated communicator of the word of god whatever he said even if he said come they still would have gone it's not it's not like they needed intelligent english because they, they spoke good english the demons say we understand no please don't be excited for nothing i really want you to get this thing are we together the word of god is not just about your voice the word of god is about an understanding that makes you become a platform for his life so as i am walking now i'm giving the word of god expression if i happen to open my mouth and speak to you i have given the word of god more expression that is the reason why a donkey could still communicate the word of god that is why handkerchiefs and aprons they were taken could the handkerchief speak they could not speak but they were going by the word of god jesus sent men in his name they were not born again yet they returned with results they said the demons were subject to us through thy name hallelujah why do we study the bible write this quickly we study the bible for three major reasons number one we study the bible because contained in the word of god contained in the bible as we know now i can call it interchangeably the word of god you understand the bible contains the most accurate dealing of god with man the bible contains the most accurate dealing of god with man we study it because it's the most accurate historical compendium of god's dealing with man there are many history books but the bible gives us the most accurate compendium historically speaking of god's dealings with man number two the bible contains principles promises prophecies from god to man the bible contains principles promises prophecies from god to man so we study so that we can have an understanding of these things number three we study the bible because it is the only book we study the bible because it is the only book that can authorize the holy spirit to make manifest what is written therein we study the bible because it is the only book that can authorize the spirit of god or the holy spirit to make manifest the things that are written therein no other spirit is legally authorized to manifest everything written here now it does not mean other spirits cannot manifest what is written here but only the holy ghost is authorized to back up to make manifest meaning listen listen meaning if i read the bible and i see by his stripes i am healed now listen when the word of god contained is released in my spirit because of this book is giving me access to that word of god now the holy spirit is authorized to make real that which i have believed from the book are you getting what i'm saying now a time is going to come maybe not in this current church age but a time is going to come we are not going to read this again i hope you know yeah a time will come we will not read this but we'll continue growing in the word a time is going to come we will not read this again it's not heresy it will not be in this dispensation the book of revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation we do not yet know what will happen therein the same way before our time it was only from acts 
chapter 1 you know when the church was born and now our dispensation has had the privilege of access to read this are we together other saints believers still in our dispensation did not read this yet the word of god was mighty in them for instance apollos the bible says he was even mighty in scripture This is where we miss it we read the letters and ben haddad the king of syria gathered all the hosts together gather me oh god gather me gather me oh god you see now listen listen that looks very sincere but the word of god is not on that statement I'm being careful so you don't feel offended but it's the truth i want to teach you how faith works do you know for many years i really didn't understand how faith worked until one time i i took out i studied almost 11 people those who represented men of faith from bishop Oyedeko to kenneth copeland and his wife to dr frederick casey price to all of the men hallmarks of faith ew kenyon i sat down with these people and i started seeing it I said so this is where we're missing it we recite scriptures and believe that the recitation is where the power is released no sir are we together am i discrediting the reading of the word of god of course not of course not you can see how old this bible is it was not like that something made it so it's called diligence diligence until the bible you you see it I don't know how many times I've laminated this Bible again and again. I've read it to a point that the pages, I can close my eyes. You say, Matthew, okay, I mean, Isaiah, <laughs> I wanted to try, you know, I can literally open any page everywhere is marked up and down. So I believe it. But I found out that many of us keep accumulating this. And then we wonder why things are not working for us. The word of God is the spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. Whether released by the reading of these letters or communicated through the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes. Now let's discuss faith. We're back to faith. Romans 10, 19. Romans 10, 17. Is God helping us tonight? I'm working this thing with us because I want us to understand faith. We are going to pray. Romans 10, 19. Read it please. 10, 17. One, two, read. Uh-huh. Now, the word hearing. Let me correct two things. The word hearing, the first hearing is a very broad word. It does not just mean faith comes by using your ears. Are we together the word hearing is a very broad word and there are many synonyms you can add to it number one is perception 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 faith comes by perceiving not just hearing with the ear alone like speaking to you physically faith comes by perception because when you read your bible you don't hear anything correct you don't hear what you read like this you can hear through your ears and remember even about hearing the bible says he that has an ear meaning not everybody has this kind of ear are we together so the first hearing there means perception any platform that can create perception is not just limited to hearing and then the second hearing there means understanding or comprehension i want you to correct that not necessarily in your bible i'm not saying it's wrong so faith comes by perceiving and understanding and that by the word of God. That's how faith comes. When you just read it and it says hearing and hearing, there is a dimension of application. It means listening again and again and that can help. But the accurate picture is perception and understanding. Everybody say perception. Say understanding. The second hearing there is understanding understandest what thou readest on that was where the problem was the utopian enoch he was not reading he was reading but understandest what thou readest perception 
so when i'm studying the word of god the bible now and i'm reading it the moment perception can come out of it the word of god has come into my spirit i don't have to hear now when i'm listening to bible on tape or hearing a preacher teach like this and the word of god comes it is still hearing so when we say hearing i don't just mean your ears your ears your eyes your dreams your visions any platform that can create perception can impart faith mm. listen listen there are people who have had dreams and got up from those dreams are we together and took certain actions those dreams brought solid conviction to their lives I shared with you about the encounter that I had with Jesus Christ. Now that encounter is not written in the Bible that Joshua Selman will have an encounter. But in that encounter, I told you Jesus did not speak to me. He never opened his mouth to speak. Yet he spoke so many things. I left that encounter full of faith. And Stephen full of faith. Where did he read anything that we see faith there? Do not limit your Bible study to just hearing and reading. Any platform that creates the perception of the word can release faith. So the first is perception. The most common platform of perception is hearing your ears. Because you hear sounds. Sounds. So as I'm speaking to you now, if you cover your ears, it's difficult for you to read my lips. Do you know why I'm speaking this to you? How do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith how do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith if someone is blind if someone is deaf if someone is dumb are you saying faith cannot come to him are we together you see people go to crusade grounds completely deaf Meaning as a man of God is preaching, other people are jumping. They themselves are not even following. Yet at the end, they are healed. And we are going to be finding out later that their faith healed them. So how did it come? Question two. A dead man who cannot breathe, cannot talk, cannot do anything. How does he come back to life? What is the principle of resurrection? And then, how did the bones of Elijah, not breathing, still transfer the anointing to somebody? Everybody say the word of God. That thing you call the bones of Elijah was the word of God. Any platform that can release the life of God. Thank you, Jesus. Say after me, the word of God is not limited to my hearing. Thank you. The word of God is not limited to my hearing alone. The word of God can come into my spirit through any mechanism that can create perception and understanding. Are you getting what I'm saying? meaning the word of god can come to you through a christian music now you are listening to a song play something play what you are playing watch this listen if this guy is anointed hallelujah okay that's all right that's all right thank you look at what this guy is playing play it are you hearing any words English is there Hebrew is there your language I want to follow me carefully are we together now but you see the anointing that is released from this I can put the word of God on this sound now and you will see miracles happening are you getting it now <laughs> I can put it by saying then this now the sound that leaves this keyboard does not become an ordinary sound it becomes the word of god why a platform that can release the life of god the power of god are you getting what i'm saying now you will hear it 
and somebody now will come under the anointing and you are wondering the operation of the word of God this is ordinary keyboard that's how you can be listening to worship in your room and faith is rising you are not exactly reading any scripture per se yet faith is rising because through it the word of God is coming Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of God. The word of God is at work in me. The presence of the Holy Spirit in my life is a sign that I was born of the word. If you are not born of the word, he cannot come because he comes in response to the word. So I am born of the word of God. New life is in me. So the Holy Spirit is comfortable to live in me. Are we together? And every time that spirit and life is in me, he can release what is being said. Now I can speak it to happen, but I don't have to speak it alone to happen. I just need to create a platform for it to happen. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you believe this, you will know why we pray for the sick, not necessarily having to say, be healed. You just touch them. And you're saying, sir, you see some, somebody who tried to say, here, this is where the pain is. And you are touching his head. How does touching the head heal pain at the back? It's the word of God. You are only placing the word of God on them. So you have become an expression of the word. The word became flesh. That's what you have now become. So you are not only reading scripture. You are the word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. When you play keyboard, you transfer the word of God to it. This is what is called the ministration of life. The ministration of life. You are transferring life. You are transferring life to that word. Are, are we together now? So, when you put the word of God upon this now, deliverance begins to happen. Healings begin to happen. A sinner can sit down. That's why people come for concerts. And at the end of it, you make an altar call and they come out. You didn't teach John 3.16, but the word of God convicted them because it came from the music. I want you to understand faith. I really want you to understand faith. This may look complicated, but as we continue, you will see how it ties up. It will make your life powerful. I don't move around hoping that demons will respond to my quoting of scripture. I know a lot of scripture to the glory of God, but I am a life-giving spirit. I am a life-giving spirit. My body has become a communicator of the word of God, the spirit and the life of God. So if I shake you, for instance, shake me, Femi. If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. Are you seeing that? If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. You may be sick, I may not know. But as soon as I leave you, you find out I've been healed. Now, I did not ask you whether you are sick. The word of God saw a need. And because I have become the word of God, it feels it immediately. Are we together? Say I'm a manifestation of the word of God. Please, I want you to say it. I am a manifestation of the word of God. Say this, my goal for studying scripture, my goal for studying scripture is not just to be learned but to be an expression of the word of God my goal for studying scripture is not just to have head knowledge it's not just to be learned but to be a walking Bible so when men look at your life they can read a scripture immediately through your life living epistles we fool ourselves in the body of Christ that because we have finished the Bible cover to cover and by God's grace I've done this many times. So we say I've read the Bible cover to cover. If I'm a man of God as I'm speaking the Bible says blah, blah, blah. And, and once they are talking these spirits are saying my God these guys don't even know what the word of God is. We fool ourselves and at the end of it nothing happens. Are we together? And then somebody comes with a saxophone or a guitar and starts playing. Anywhere you see the manifestation of the power of God, the word of God must have preceded it. Because the Holy Spirit is not authorized to manifest when the word of God has not gone ahead. So when you see the word of God moving, when you see the Holy Spirit moving, he's confirming the word. Confirming the word.
whether spoken or revealed. The manifestation of the word of God. The manifestation of the word of God. I tell you, as I, as I speak this thing, you see, sometimes, because we are talking about the word of God and we are dividing it accurately to open up these things, the spirit of God, let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. The moment you begin to communicate the word of God very accurately, it's like his body is itching him. He wants to move. He wants to confirm it. I'm telling you how to confirm the word. It's not Holy Spirit. Move. Move. Mm -mm, that's not it. Let the word of God be communicated accurately. And it's like, it's like he cannot. I'm not talking of just shaking under the anointing. I'm talking of signs and wonders and miracles. You place the word of God upon everything. The word of God is on the air. The word of God is on your chair. Everything that can communicate the word of God. That's what makes the anointing. When the word of God saturates a place, the Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. The Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. If the word goes to your kidney, he's following it there. If the word goes to your academics, he's following it there. If the word goes to your business, you don't get the Holy Spirit to move outside the word of God. It's witchcraft. So, send the word of God and the Holy Spirit follows the word. Are we together? You send the word of God and the spirit moves in that direction. So if I declare that I prophesy to your finances, if the Holy Spirit does not back that, then it was not the word of God. Even if I quote scripture, are we together? So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that the word of God has been released in a place. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that his word has been released we pride ourselves with theological knowledge we pride ourselves with knowledge of scriptures john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world but it's not the word of god so the holy spirit cannot back it please hear what i'm teaching you the holy spirit only comes to the scene when the word of god is released whether through speaking or through any platform including your body being a manifestation so when you want to see the energy of the spirit released then be sure that what you are speaking or doing is the word of God are you getting what I'm saying now mm. if it's not the word of God you are not going to get the Holy Spirit here please hear me the degree to which we have seen the miraculous is the extent to which the word of God has come out so you can speak 100 words only 20 of them are the word of God the Holy Spirit backs only 20% of your communication are you getting what I'm saying this is the difference between what we call anointed people they may not have all the verses but their bodies have become greater platforms to release the word of God so the Holy Spirit in answer to the word confirms them are we together I'm a carrier of the word of God. Not just by cramming scriptures. I have read it. But the word of God flows through me like water. The spirit and the life of God. I understand the principles. As I walk in the consciousness of that principle. And with the understanding. Every time I utter my word. Or respond in any direction. As the Holy Spirit would direct. That's what we call faith. I will tell you what faith is now. Faith is your response to and from the word of God not just scriptures your response to the word of God so you have to make it be sure that what you are responding to is not just scripture but the word of God and it is called faith and that faith will bring performance more on that next week I'm not talking so much about I need you to understand the word of God so that when we begin to teach on the dynamics the operation of faith you will know why certain things are not happening in our lives our idea of faith largely has been correct assimilation of scripture correct recitation of the same and then expectation in hope that something will happen it will never work that way are we together John 3:16 for this and that and that and that happened for we know the grace of our lord that though he was poor yet he became rich so that we through his poverty might be, and we wrap it 
and we say lord this is your word respond and say no it is true that i spoke that through the servants but you are only speaking scripture theologically listen let me tell you if the word of god was just scripture then the scribes should be have been the greatest carriers of the word they knew the entire pentateuch of heart and jesus looked at them and said ye are not knowing the scripture he said you search the scripture for a thing in them you will find life and you will not come to me listen if jesus appears here and somebody is writing a book the Bible says scripture testified of him. Is that true? Scripture. Listen. If you are writing a book about me and I show up, who is a more authentic medium? Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, the scribes had head knowledge that prophesied about Jesus. When Jesus came, they said, no, Jesus, we don't want you. But we want the scrolls. And he said, you are hypocrites you read the scrolls they talk about me now you're reading i am here as the word become flesh you are rejecting me yet you are doing bible study and jesus said you are hypocrites are we together but a woman just ran and said thou i mean blind but if i may but touch the hem of who the word of god she perceived she didn't read anywhere but she saw men looking and she said i have heard and something has happened in my spirit i perceive and i understand that this man has power to heal there is nowhere in scripture where she read that you should take a step of faith she created an action based on her perception god honored that action and she was healed i'll teach you that next week don't take action until you perceive and understand the word you will be wasting your time so we take many steps do you know people can come and stand here with their tight frowning no perception no discernment no understanding all these men of god am ah, i sure a jimmy's tie i'm looking at this tie i hope it's not my money that is going to buy another tie and you are there grumbling and arguing and you drop that and the bible says whatever is not of faith is sin now men of God will not tell you that because they need the money so they'll say no problem unbelief or not that's your business just drop it let's use it but I'm telling you the sincere truth it must be by faith so here's what the Bible says Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 give it to us please goodness Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 I want us to read it now you will understand all that I've taught you there is a protocol to faith ready want to read <laughs> but without faith it is impossible to please him full stop whoever wants to be a man of faith what is the first step it says for he that comes to god must believe not his word leave the issue of manifestation you must believe that he exists it your perception must on you must understand the person you are dealing with the integrity of his person and his ability to provide for you number one then number two that he's a rewarder that he's a rewarder there are two things god wants to be known for to release faith one that he exists his existence means a lot because if he exists then he's mighty if he exists then he can hear my god's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion there's a song like that have you read have you listened to that song do you believe god is alive i know you will say yes your life does not show it are we together because if you believe it will compel you to take action look at me listen do you believe there is water on this table do you believe do you believe now you can come and carry it do you believe there is water on this table yes you will not come and carry it because you consider it to be a waste of time so do you believe there is god yes so you can relate to him this is why people do not pray they don't believe god is alive let me tell you the truth the revelation behind the life of prayer it's not religious struggles it's not an attempt to compete with people i pray for eight hours you pray for six hours all that is junk 
prayer is predicated upon an understanding that unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come after the service people are going to be waiting here queuing right to the back because you believe i'm not going what if i just i use style and just run out if i do that for three weeks you will stop standing here because it's a sign that you doubt my ability the first doubt of believers is not even in the power of god to produce that result it's even his existence i know you think this thing i'm telling you is powerful the word of god is guiding us here do you believe god exists it's a very big deal i've given my life to him no problem do you believe he exists he's alive he's alive sing it he's alive he's alive amen he's alive amen he's alive jesus is You visit a herbalist you must live with a charm you don't visit whether that charm is a goat or is something you must live with we call them tokens tokens are representations of the existence of something are we together so you go to him i must marry that man put him in a bottle for me and then they carry his picture throw it in a bottle and lock it correct and give you say hide it somewhere for as long let me tell you the devil does not need that bottle he needs your faith and since your faith must be tied on something he gave you a bottle let me tell you why it still works even if you are born again you are born again because although you are born again you truly still you have tasted of the power of that charm something in you still tells you it's working so it continues working the day a higher revelation and a higher anointing contents it stops working a man of god one time was hungry and was passing and he saw a chicken that they had slaughtered for sacrifice he carried the chicken and roasted it and ate do you know why he never believed that that thing can do anything to him he said they shall take up poison who the believers believers in god not in miracles you believe in miracles but do you believe in god we're talking about knowing that god exists you know joshua selman exists but do you believe he exists let me tell you something you are a hypocrite if you claim to believe what is written here and don't believe the one who wrote it are we together oh i believe all things are mine do you believe the god who said it lord i don't believe in you but i believe in what you said does that make sense you don't believe in me but you believe in what i said no me and what i have said are one my word is my bond my word represents me when i'm not there you can take my word to represent me if i listen sam if you are dedicating an album and i stand before koinonia listen to me and i say joshua selman on behalf of myself i give you one million naira what is that that's my word now during if you go somewhere and you are doing your calculations you will calculate and say one million naira is coming from apostle have i given you the one million but you know me you believe in me it's up to you now to believe I can deliver it. Let me tell you what you do. You will first size me. And look at me. Can apostle really bring out one million naira? Are we together? So when you ascertain that I am able to do it. Number two, am I willing? When you ascertain that, you say, I believe it. So when God says, I will bless you. Your own belief sizes him. And says, no, God, you are great. But this triplets you are talking about don't don't joke with us so the cure is not just action the action part is hard we're coming to that but if you act 
upon something you don't believe is a waste if you believe in something and don't act it's also a waste are you seeing how we are cleaning it up but we are starting tonight with the understanding of God his word his integrity say I believe in God shout it I believe in God I believe he is alive I believe he exists that's why I love the Apostles Creed the Anglicans recite it all the time right I love it so much because it's an encapsulation it's called it's, it's like a statement of faith sometimes you need to recite what you really believe I believe my business can rise I believe my life can do this I believe my wife can get pregnant that's wonderful but do you believe in God there is no guarantee in scripture that if you believe those things they will happen he that believeth on me John 12 14 please give it to us we'll find somewhere and pray now John 12 14 John 12 14 the son of the living God himself speaking John 12 14 John 14 12 John 14 12 John 14 12 thank you read it please everyone one two read stop it is important who you believe not just that you believe who you believe Jesus never said if you believe on things you believe that things that will happen they will happen he says verily verily I say unto you he that believe on what on me I want your faith to be directed to me not my works not my works I believe all things are possible but the reason why I believe all things are possible is because of him that can make them possible the end of your faith should be tied to a person and his integrity not the things he can do restful confidence he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and what greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my father do you believe in him do you believe he exists sister listen to me you it's impossible to believe that fibroid will leave you until you believe in who the healer is are you getting what I'm saying man of God I believe my ministry will be great you are joking you are just playing games but I know whom I have believed and so I am persuaded in his ability that he is able the first thing is to believe the person then I am persuaded we leave the person and we believe in the ability and the things that will happen and we never get results he said is I see this happen all the time innocent people not taking out time do you know this is why intimacy is important with God intimacy does not help you believe things intimacy gives you an encounter an encounter furnishes the reality of God in you so that whatever he says is as good as him so you can believe Jesus son of God I believe in you I believe in you We call you our Messiah Jesus Son of God I believe in you I believe in you Sing one more time from your heart yeah. Jesus Son of God I believe So, when I lock up myself, I carry my Bible, I set an atmosphere that brings an intense presence of God. And when I lie down and open my Bible, number one, I am not reading for preaching. MOG, I'm not reading for preaching. I'm not reading for recitation. John chapter 1 verse 5, in this and that and that. And, and we, no, 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 no. I'm looking at it. Jesus said, if you believe in me and I sit down there Holy Ghost help me believe this truth Jesus said his presence is there Jesus said and in my mind I'm looking at people gathered for miracle service they don't know me maybe they are discussing among themselves where is the man 
and the man is there walking on his faith lord i know you are able i don't know what i'm going to see here but i believe in you there is no assurance anywhere physically but i believe in you and when i step and come right here and sit down the moment the worship team finishes do you know what i tell the holy spirit every time i say let's go it's time to go and do this as i climb this stage i'm an ordinary man but not alone he's standing by my side and so I can speak and make every audacious statement. And because of what is coming, listen, let me tell you, I believe in Jesus. I really believe in him. When he tells me something, I don't doubt. You will always doubt God till you encounter him. It's not the issue of I'm trying. Now, let me tell you, watch this. The body of Christ has fabricated a formula that if not careful, it will be our carnal attempt to recite and to 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 um, replace encounters is the concept a false concept of recitation of scriptures listen what we call confession comes from the word homologio meaning speak that which has been said i believe that there is a step to that but let me tell you what many people do we think that we just get up and start speaking I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I won't hear anything. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And you said, I said it hundred times. Listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope you understand. I'm just trying to correct all because we will soon get frustrated with all those things. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to my mind. No, listen, your mind was designed to submit. Your mind is not that rebellious. It was designed to submit. You have not created the condition for it to submit. The Bible said, casting down every yetzah, every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Your mind can submit. The mistake that we make is that we don't take our time to meditate. Lord, this shall not happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. But it's happening. It can't happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. It can't happen. Me, God forbid, I must carry my child. I'm carrying my miracle baby. Now, that is good. I don't have a problem with that confession. But what is the revelation behind it? What is the revelation that sponsors that thing? What you are speaking is not the word of God. What you are speaking is emotion. What you are speaking is fear. I can guarantee you most of what we do is a reaction to fear. It's just a spiritual reaction to fear or a spiritualized reaction to fear. Because, listen, if you are speaking right now and they tell you your registration date is closing now for whatever, maybe a job, you need 100,000. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call forth helpers. They are coming. Hey, they are coming. Oh, oh, God. They are coming. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Let me show you that it's not just faith. It's fear. They were praying for the apostles to be released from prison. In the book of Acts. They were praying and asking that God would send angels. God now sent the angels. Peter came out and they opened the door. Saw Peter shot him back and kept praying that's what many of us do are we together no i can't find my wallet i'm a tighter what is this i'm a tighter i dropped my tight in koinonia oh god i'm a i'm a tighter at least it's better than nothing but i'm teaching you restful confidence say restful confidence if you are to be honest you will know it's fear I noticed the loudest prayer in Koinonia is against the spirit of death and the calling of destiny helpers. I have noticed it personally that every time I say everybody stand up and you know sometimes you can lead it seriously. Be serious. I mean when we say go is like an arrow. All kinds of Where are your destiny helpers? Ah, where are they? Praise the Lord. Can you get to a point where when you speak, you speak based on conviction? When you say, I shall not die, you are not helping yourself believe. An encounter 
has furnished a reality in your life and it's on the strength of that reality you say I shall not die how many of you prayed to sit down on your chair how many how many of you prayed to sit down okay, need, okay. praise the Lord are you hearing what I'm saying how many of you when you came through perception and understanding you knew that there are laws that were created by God to keep this chair who among you is sitting down now and say oh Lord I really believe you ah no this chair you can't disgrace me now now does that mean you are not a believer for keeping quiet that's how restful your life should be you can sit down inside fire and you only talk when necessary because there is something you know are you hearing what I'm saying please I, I want you to believe what I'm teaching you otherwise this series is a waste I'm taking out time to pound on this because I want you to believe God you step in and somebody looks at you and says I'm your grandmother go and ask about the people I have killed I vow that you will not see December this year it's a vow I vow that you will not see December this year you now go back Lord is this how I'm going to go what did I do who did I offend let me tell you what most believers will say God forbid then later they will sleep and say Kai hi now let me tell you that woman herself is even afraid of you she's but because she gave an attitude and said I dare you she left you with an attitude you too you claim to have the attitude but there was no restful confidence after a while you say apostle um, I don't know I don't mind I don't be it's not me but I'm just telling you so that you will pray for me it's still fear it's still fear the same way an intelligent student writes an exam he knows what he wrote and they'll just look and say do you know only four people passed the student may just feel an inkling of fear but the student knows that even if it's one student that passed I am the one now he's not boasting out of nothing he knows what he read he understood it he cross checked the question after the exam and he was absolutely satisfied it's called restful confidence the other person who does not really know what he did is now hoping that's why when he sees ah, finally have you seen the best student Lord I'm grateful I give you all the praise but I expected it this is how your life must be that you know God sister you are 34 you are not going to marry and all of a sudden you start going and say talk mountain to mountain valley to valley everywhere you start running all around and you just fidget there are many of us the moment somebody speaks to you someone just holds your hand and says for sinner i had a vision in that vision i saw cats eating you up for sinner does not sleep for one week are you getting what i'm saying now i will tell you what the problem is the problem is not the vision the problem is not whether it's true or false the problem is you if I look at you now and say for sinner you're a man will you pray about it I'll tell you why it's not just because God told you you're a man there are too many things that have happened in your life to convince you beyond imagination you don't just believe you are a woman you don't just trust you are a woman you know you are a woman notice the progression I'm believing God I trust God I know my God I know him I know him God it doesn't look like him I know him when can you say you know him that's what Moses knew he knew his ways though he slay me yet will I praise him because I know him I know him I'm trusting God to get to a point in my life where I don't just jack up my faith trying to believe God trying to believe God trying to believe God 
trying to believe God trying to believe God oh Lord I believe in you oh Lord I... no, no 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 at that point you will move mountains you will join these elders brothers and sisters mountains will stand before you people will even pity you their eyes because they think you are dead at the end of it they will not see the mountain again and they'll see you shaking yourself that's how great people live in this life this ministry you have seen is here by faith by faith by faith by faith I've come to a point where I'm not trying to believe God I really trust him faith is based on the speaking of God trust is based on your experience with God you have had an experience with God there is a track record of his credibility so you can trust yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies we need to begin to walk by faith there are too many things in our lives that attempt to challenge our trust in God but you must get to a point where you say from today I walk by faith and the first encounter is to make the Word of God real in your life look at me the greatest investment you can make in your life is not having an education the greatest investment you can make in your life is not just having good friends the greatest investment you can make in your life is to make your life saturated with the Word of God where you take the Word of God as a project you have given yourself a basis for true faith because there are mountains to cross I like that Don Wen song though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the Lord holy Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. Listen, Koinonia, I speak to you. You are not the first to go through challenges. There are men on earth who have crossed this river. They have crossed the river of barrenness. They turned barrenness to triplets. Are we together? There are men who turn being a pauper, not affording 10 naira to giving billions to nations. There are men of God who turn two members to nations. You are not the first. There are those who overrode the mockery of men. It's time for you to leave the level you are in. This life of pity. Oh God, won't you show up for me? No, sir. He will show up when you are ready. Though we are few, you are surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, holy is the Lord. Listen, so God puts his word upon your life. Femi, you will be great. He will never do any other thing until you do something with the word. You can sit there forever and die a failure. It does not mean he lied. The word of God does not act on itself. By the time you look at your life, my father is not doing well. My mother is not doing well. I came from a village. Please listen. I am one of 17 children. I am even the second to the last born. I am 35 years old. I've not done anything meaningful. You look at all of this. And God says, if you believe me, God never gave men instructions until he revealed himself to them. The first assignment was to reveal himself to Abraham, revealed himself to Moses. Then he now sent them. 
they every time they wanted to disobey they remembered him they remembered him the same way somebody want to tell you look there's one there's somebody that i saw in whatsapp i spoke with him and he said he's looking for a wife and the way you have been desperately looking for a husband or a wife i think i can do a range for you and he said no problem god works in many ways i believe but that is not faith it's unbelief are we together listen make up your mind today that you will never take any action in unbelief until you stay and believe god this is why people who rush through things in life suffer they rush to start business they rush to marry they rush to enter a relationship they rush to do this do you know why when challenges push you you will not just look at what you are looking at you have to look at god you have to go back and say lord i know you all you spoke you said koinonia will rise you said you will give us a voice i believe you many graduates are holding their certificates roaming around the streets in nigeria angry the same people can bring notes for you when they were in 200 level they said god told me i will be great fast forward many years they are now holding they were never believing in god they were believing in that certificate they were just hoping that god was the certificate now that they've held the certificate they are moving around and you're asking them where were your visions where were your dreams you said god gave you courage god told you you will never fail brothers and sisters what has god told you leave what he has told you and focus on him the one who spoke i'm reintroducing to you today a god who is dependable i'm reintroducing to you today a god who had parted the sea this bible is a chronicle of his ability a chronicle of his integrity so that you will believe him away with all those talk we have mocked god we have cursed god because of our challenges i know there are challenges i never said there would not be that's why i read you hebrews 11 but i want to see your reaction show me your reaction under fire and i show you whether you know god or not show me your reaction when things are not happening and i can tell you whether you know god though he slay me will i be honest if i say i do not know him i know him i know him he is dependable if i die today without a miracle i still know him that's what made the people in hebrews 11 they knew him so much they rejected deliverance listen listen imagine for instance that god gives you two options in life just imagine and god says you will go through a season with me for six years and you will become so mighty or you will go through a season for one year you will start moving fast but you will not become as mighty as six years let me tell you what many of us will choose a bed in hand is what 20 in the bush oh god thank you for giving me this one year i can i can pay the price but there are those who know god and say lord even if it's 10 years let's go because one step in faith will give you 20 years worth of miracle one step in faith one step in faith have you not seen how god wiped the tears of people and changed the lives of people overnight men who trusted god koinonia i'm introducing to you a god you need to know before you start claiming to believe his word you must have an encounter with this god you must create the atmosphere for his word to be real in your life let it not just be talk 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 cheap talk talk no sir anything god cannot give me no man would claim to say he can give me anything god cannot give me that's why i can look at any man and say thank you for your open door but go with it god did not open that door and i will not go back to sleep and regret i believe god brothers and sisters look at me i have gone through mountains and valleys in my life make no mistakes about it don't you think i'm just talking to you from a standpoint of comfort i have gone through things that very few people can go through and survive i know that god is mighty by and large in life 
everything you trust will fail you and a time will come you will no longer hold on to things but a person pastors have called me man of god i've listened to your messages but nothing is working in my ministry and the first question i ask them is are you sure you are called and they say yes i said if you believe you are called did you hear what god told you they say yes i say stay there stay at the last instruction he gave you and die there there's a song that says i will be a good soldier he says i will die at my post if he does not shift a post let me die there i will survive the mockery i will survive the ridicule i don't have to be under pressure to explain things to people no it's not like this actually it's, it's, it's god that told no you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him koinonia please hear me faith the foundation of faith is an encounter with god an experience that furnishes the reality of him there are real mountains you will face you will face all kinds of mountains even the most trusted people in your life cannot take his place a time will come you will have to stand alone and say lord jesus i trust you i trust you though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord holy is the lord though we are few though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing we'll be forever. Singing forever. I want you to fall in love with your Bible tonight. Listen, please. Listen. Listen. Please listen to me. I know you have books in your library. Listen to me, please. I know you have books in your library. I know you have DVDs. I know you have CDs. But I bring you to a point tonight where you eat this word till something leaves it and enters your spirit. I have in my phone a compendium of the words of Jesus. Only the words of Jesus spoken. Only everything Jesus ever said in the Bible. Only it. I listen to it every time I love the words of Jesus I listen to it sometimes I let it run for hours as I sleep and I have encounters I wake up under certain intense dimensions I know something happened I don't need to know what happened I know something happened are we together I know that something happened to me and encounter I'm a very busy person just returned from a trip today tomorrow we're off for another one you know Eddie was driving me we're coming from the bank and he asked me a question he said apostle do you ever rest I may live a busy life but not too busy for this this is the most accurate picture compendium of the dealings of God with men I don't read I read my Bible emotionally I don't read my Bible intellectually. When I look at it, I see myself. If it be thou, bid me come. I, I, I replace Peter and I stand there. I look at all the challenges that are before me. 
There's a peace in my heart In spite of all the darkness that surrounds me And this peace that I know Only comes alive every time I hear your voice There's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light in my soul only comes alive every time i hear your voice listen brothers and sisters i want you to hear me if you do not come to a point of restful confidence through the word you will shake like a leaf at life at a point in time you will feel like dying that's what makes people commit suicide they get to a point in their lives where they move left there is no way out they move right they are pressed to the core and they think the only way is to drink to smoke or get a gun and blow themselves this word can minister the life of God to you this is ordinary scripture but the moment you begin to read it believing that out of it will come the word of God I assure you you will see miracles in your life and ministry sister I'm prophesying to you it's not over I don't know who said it's over but you take this Bible and recreate your future you have been predicting it by wishful thinking now create it through the power of the word you have been predicting it just by hoping hope is important it make it not a shame but let me tell you the truth if you must walk in any reality in your life you are going to have to create it i believe the word of god i know whom i have believed i have not followed cunningly devised fables i believe him it's time for every word that proceeds from your mouth to be a communication of faith don't speak until you believe we having the same spirit of faith it's called the operation of faith we having the same spirit operation of faith as it is written i have believed and so i spoke i did not speak to believe i spoke because i have believed you don't speak to believe you have an encounter to believe then you speak because you have believed this is bible faith time will fill me of jephthah and barak men who through faith koinonia please listen they built houses by faith some of us have come where god has brought us today it is by grace through faith by grace through faith by grace but through faith it is not just by grace through wishing by grace through crossing your legs and hoping that because it's by grace it will happen you will never see any result it is God's desire please listen it is God's desire to see you lift up your prayer request and watch every single one of them answered it does not take you to hell and it does not reduce your Christian life are we together now away with that thinking that when God answers our prayers it will make us leave him no it is when there is already a heart that is not truly inclined to God you don't need to have results to leave God when your heart is not positioned on God and your love for him is in doubt anything can take you away from him but let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters when you love the Lord with all your heart and your heart is pegged at seeing that his kingdom come there is nothing he will withhold from you you've heard my story I've shared with you that the Lord told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you it is his will for you to have the supernatural results that you seek and it's important that we give God room to do these things in the lives of people if you are a preacher please listen it is good to teach people the word it is good to help people grow it is good to provide a platform for spiritual enlightenment but sometimes people don't need knowledge they need real results 
there are times that listen carefully there are times that you don't go to meet a patient in an icu and tell the patient while you are almost dying take note of the following number one next time don't stay around mosquitoes number two and the patient is gasping for breath there are situations that don't need counseling there are situations that don't need advice there are situations that need a head-on collision with the power and the grace of god there are people sitting right now looking at me smiling but with death sentences in the name of medical verdicts that's not the time to start giving people any any advice you give people love the lord in 10 years make sure you are consistent the person says i'm dying right as i'm dying right now take me out of that situation and then i can give you my attention to mentor me and build me hallelujah i believe in miracles i really believe in miracles i believe in the manifestation of the power of god i believe that the power of god can be made visible here and now i believe that god anoints us to provide supernatural solutions you are here because of the things you have heard god do you are here because of the lives you saw him change and let me tell you your case will not be different tonight in the name of jesus christ but i just want to encourage you so that you don't come hoping will god bless me will god lift me is he interested in the joy that my family will have when results come is he interested in the new level of anointing i will receive as a man of god is he concerned that my church is going down is he concerned that everyone i laid hands on was not healed is he concerned that i am going down spiritually the God we serve is a lifter. He does not bring people down who love him and stay true to him. So it's important for you to be ready to wave goodbye to all of the challenges that you made so much sacrifice to come here to present to God. Don't sit down and hope that, oh God, um, well, let's see what you will do. No, no. Remember, remember, I have taught you, for those of you coming for the first time, listen. The very factor that is responsible for results in the kingdom is the anointing his divine power your faith only connects you to the anointing it is not your faith as it were that brings you results your faith is like a host that connects the tap to the plant that needs refreshing but it's the power of god and let me tell you sincerely where the power of god is lavishly allowed to find expression then darkness must flee then lives must change then situations must be transformed are we together now expect the hand of god do you know it's amazing how that you will see people gathered like this and you will think just because they are looking at a preacher they are expectant many people are used to god not working in their lives to the point that they don't expect anything they may look and say amen and hope that they will get something there is a level of hunger and desperation like jacob where you tell the lord i did not leave the east the south the west i didn't travel out of this nation to come into nigeria come into zaria just to watch people get healed get blessed and share the grace and go back no there is a level of insistence insistence give us hebrews chapter 11 please and verse 6 just a charge and then we'll minister tonight but without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please him. The him there is God. For he that cometh to God, this is a rule. This is a spiritual law. That he that comes to God must believe that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you not know that transporting yourself from the great distance you came from, is proof of diligence is proof that you trust God you held that report you held that cancer report you held that this and that report and you continue to believe God our assignment is continue to align in prayer and true sacrifice to say Lord continue to multiply your anointing so that the issue that could not be solved in January can be solved in March I've taught you how the anointing works. And let me just teach it very quickly for the sake of those of us 
who may be encountering this ministry for the first time I taught you that the anointing works like money listen very carefully that you only can solve spiritual problems or problems that are within the level of the grace you carry the same way you can have 10,000 naira 10,000 naira can buy you a few things it cannot buy you a car it cannot buy you a house but it is still money if you need to buy a house you need more of the same thing to the amount that can purchase the house every challenge in the realm of the spirit has a level of grace and anointing that can solve it just because you are anointed does not mean all problems will bow I gave an example yesterday while I was teaching in Abia and I told them that you can bring someone for instance in a wheelchair and keep the person outside and a man of God can even lay hands on the person and the person may not be healed you he go back sick are we together now you take the same person and keep that person in Benny Hinn's overflow not the main bowl overflow and right there he comes and whilst he's singing the person gets up the difference is not God the difference is the extent of the anointing how God anointed Jesus not that Jesus was anointed the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed you are a blessing when you stay with God to be anointed to the degree to which most problems that come are under the level of your grace People have come to me and with all humility, as soon as they begin to talk, I discern what their challenges are and I know that this problem is far, far below the level of the grace that I have. Sometimes I will not even pray. I will say, go, it's done. So the, the man of God's assignment is that while you are building your expectation, while you are paying so much to transport yourself to be here, while you are fasting and opening your heart, our own assignment is to stay with God, to say, I've seen your grace before, but evil is multiplying. There are situations that know there are superior levels of graces that can solve it. When someone loses 10 million naira, and comes to you and says I'm about to die I don't know whether I'm alive or not but the last time they told me I was dying help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed Elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life it's not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of may that's not the time to settle down and start saying oh this and that line upon line precept they are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart oh how we need the power of god in this generation we need the power of god more than falling down we need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, it is his divine power that is the giver. And if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions, then you will continue to see people frustrated. If you're a man of God and you came here, listen to me. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. Let me repeat myself. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. You may be a good person. You may be a sincere person. It takes more than sincerity to be a blessing. The Messianic prophecy, Isaiah chapter 61. Please give it to us. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and then he says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord had anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty 
it doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty it takes the anointing you can have the mouth and say be free but it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives it takes the anointing to open up prison doors next verse it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and then the year of vengeance of our God look up please it takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 to appoint to them that mourn in Zion so even in Zion there are those who mourn it didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion they are in Zion yet they are mourning To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. 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 For ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed, when a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month, ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing, you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes and God says, keep your ashes here. Take beauty. As you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the street like an armed robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. When you sit down and try everything and it does not work, you just tell yourself, I'm better off dead. And you at least, my money cannot rent a house, but it can buy a rope. What can it buy? A rope. And the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope. And you find a tree and hang yourself. And you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died. And then people come to church with that kind of pain. And the man of God says, don't worry. It's not all about your needs. It's about Jesus. I agree. It's about Jesus. But man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely. There has to be an opportunity given. When the spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people. I will never, never watch people go through things that the power of God can change. And act as if nothing can be done about it. No sir. Whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families. 
Whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered. I know you have prayed. I know you have fasted. But I've told you why it did not happen. It takes a level of grace. Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen, a place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny he says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end. I believe that problems can end. Did you hear what I said? I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. 
nobody will preach you into embracing nonsense no I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers I believe in speed I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month I truly believe it I truly believe it I believe God can restore time When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We're talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you.
that God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with and you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual and suddenly fire a new dimension of grace do you believe in what I'm sharing if you been evil know how to give good gifts let me tell you you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight I need your hands too in addition to your heart step in over my life step in please don't give up on God wake up don't give up on God don't come here hoping I've waited waited the God of heaven can compress time if you don't believe all this there's no point being here tonight because we are going to pray and you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody I came to mean business with my destiny listen when we begin to pray I like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night no matter what it is some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again because of your pain you've stopped writing some things you just concluded that God this one just just leave this issue no when it was time to resurrect Lazarus he said roll away the stone roll away the stone prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone two things men did they rolled away the stone and they lose the man what if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed your destiny must open up tonight It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things. To prove your calling and election. To make it sure. There are things that must be in your life. To validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace. For God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture. And speak and close it and say let's pray. No. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today.
that wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine that wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine pray pray don't look around that wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine place something upon my life oh god place something upon my destiny upon my business upon my church Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point, and the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield do to me you said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten do to me oh God pray do to me oh God visit my family you said you will wipe away every tears you call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Please look up. Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It, he said, I must walk the works of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. He says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now, inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strange dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for Kabakatalika Parusia. Receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel. I command speed, 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 speed. Bring them out. Speed. Help that woman, please. My God. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus, 
It says, ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what? I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. New level. Speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not praying for individuals now. I'm praying for families. Any family stagnated here. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and I prophesy speed inside and outside. I release speed right now. Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs. Chains. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is bringing deliverance now. I'm seeing chains. If you are under this category as I'm praying now, the fire of God, I'm seeing fire moving, but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare. Is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I meant, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Bye. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now in the name that is above all names. I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness. That have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and yo go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Elabarakatos pekeretos. Heliabratos kepereketos. 
every ordinance that is not the planting of God let it go now let it go now I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit let it go now I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears that terminates everything that brings tears bring them out hallelujah young lady please shift this one you lift your hands shout Jesus as loud as you can oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh, eh. Oh, yeah, yeah, say. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, oh, yeah, yeah, say. My friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God. As he has anointed, as I pass your row, if there is anything that is not of God, it must let you go. Are we together now? So please, you pray. The moment we do that, then we'll begin to minister to the sick. These things are signs and wonders. They are supernatural. They are supernatural even by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Please... I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now 
the hand of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ receive the Lord is touching you I'm seeing God's taking something out of someone's stomach here it's going now now I release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of Jesus be free now I'm seeing fire rising from this row just from I don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this row right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone, it is over. An anointing is coming on you now, it is over. 
over, 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 shakata, over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free, be free, be free. Be free. Please help them, help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Be free now. In the name of Jesus, I declare and declare. Be free, be free, be free. Every devil of darkness, be free now. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that help, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I'm seeing a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me, Overflow 2. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Every reproach, go now. Go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please. Except God is not God. Whatever it is that has held you, as I pass by the Spirit, the power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you. At the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. 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 From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound. 
but in the name of Jesus one more time I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three one two three be free now be free now you came for a miracle service hallelujah hallelujah please look at me overflow three look at me hallelujah the lord is showing me a family i will soon walk out but i just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside the lord is showing me a family here there is a plague of sickness everybody from father to the last child there is nobody who is fine right now as I'm speaking the power of God is coming upon that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ overflow 3 I'm seeing the number 21 this is the healing anointing coming on 21 people right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands this is not a healing miracle this is the anointing to heal right now from the front to the back upon gentlemen and upon ladies receive that grace receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now please everyone overflow one two three main auditorium Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Voice and pray. God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail, not give me tea and bread, not give me tea and bread, to pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk. You're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please quickly, you come stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand. Overflow two. You can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you'll be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria.
Okay. 
These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. 
release this lady now in the name of Jesus my friend look at me you came all the way from Thailand in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God this fractured leg I fix it back now you see what is happening to you what do you feel happening to you huh? look at me go run Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when I held your leg I felt the power of God moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too I want to pray for you you see God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God many footballers don't love Jesus they love football and they love the money that comes with it but we're not only here God has perfected this let me pray on the x-ray please father in the name of Jesus let this miracle remain forever Amen. I want to pray for both of you I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you but listen to me I'm sure I don't know you have never seen you can I prophesy on your career in the name of Jesus the son of the living God from today let the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are a footballer but you play by the anointing my friend it takes more than just kicking a ball I release the grace to excel and for you I release the grace to excel right now two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you in Jesus name God bless you thank you so much for your patience we're about to pray on the requests I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I truly believe that as we pray on these requests that every situation that has defied God it must answer to the name of the Lord let her go now I curse you by the God of heaven out now Who else? Praise the Lord. Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you're yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that god gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please I want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to I want you to believe because this is representing you before God I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately pray passionately You're not done. that Lord this that I'm bringing before you this will be the last I truly believe make sure we collect for those outside if you are still being ministered to no problem you can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord I'm seeing fire burn on this thing I wanted to go down on my knees 
but I just saw fire burning and the Lord said I should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it um, there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of God is coming on two of them the moment that happens then I have the release to speak on this these are signs and wonders my precious people sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them a gentleman and a lady this is the sign that God gave me now I'm ready to pray in the name of Jesus believe with me I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide I call on the God of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this I'm not sure I, I think Koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and I held and I just heard that it was done in the spirit and I said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today I have seen them they are strong they are fine the Bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except God instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered 
I declare mercy upon this request in the name of Jesus Christ father I stand representing the desires the pain of your people you have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted Lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit that brought the need for this request I banish them from your life in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the Word of God I've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week I thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself that's why I didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now I don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and I was about to sleep when I got his text he had been calling and I said please send the text and he sent it and I looked at it and he said I'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the Spirit came upon me on my bed I laid hands and I sent him a text I said find that key that's all I wrote God is my witness I will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept I'm telling you the truth under God and he saw me in a dream this is what he said I was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a Christian because the very foundation of Christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit God I say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing God cannot do I'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ a gentleman here one of the years checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son I'm not surprised 
and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job <laughs> hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of god you will open your bible and look at it like this like a storybook you can read a book of 600 pages in one week but you can hardly finish one page of the bible it's an attack i decree and declare let the spirit of revelation 
and a passion for the word of God may it rest upon you may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayer points and we're done herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit the grace for results is called the power of performance receive that grace now I speak to you produce results produce results repeated results predictable results in every area of your life be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me pray for you everything that is alive grows when you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years no teeth he can't talk you know that something is wrong with that child are we true your destiny is like a child if it is alive then it should grow when a tree grows and begins to mature it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit I don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience I declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as God touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone I want to make an altar call I believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention let me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to Jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle I have given my life to Jesus but I need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. Win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody 
to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. It's something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come for altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and i declare their sins forgiven and i declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them holy spirit i commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow the someone waving her hands, a lady. And all of you in contact. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.